welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this really pretty deep bronze um, eyeshadow using the Jaclyn Hill Times Morphe Brushes eyeshadow palette. And I'm also going to be doing a review, just a quick review of what I think of the palette and the eyeshadows and the packaging and all that at the end of the video. So if you guys want to learn how to get this look and see what I think about this palette, then just keep on watching. So I went ahead and did one eye already just to make this process a little bit faster and easier for you. But I already primed this eye as well and today I use the Too Faced Shadow Insurance to prime my eyes. And let's go ahead and get started. Alright, taking a Morphe M532 brush, I'm going to take the color Butter right here. And I'm going to put that all over my crease and just above it as well. I want this color to be really diffused all over the upper lid area. Just slowly build that color up. Don't go in too heavy, just slowly build it up and go back in if you have to. Okay, now that I have set down a really nice base and transition, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the color Mocha right here with my Morphe R37 brush. And I'm going to start building up my crease and really deepening it up with this color. Now taking a Morphe M321 pencil brush, I'm going to start really deepening and darkening up the outer corner of my eyes. And I like to use this pencil brush because it's very precise and it's not going to blow out the color all over the place. So we're just going to put it on the outer V of the eye, keeping it nice and low. And now for the lid, I'm going to be going in with the color Meeks and I'm using my eyeshadow brush by e.l.f. And I love this color because it's like a really nice deep brown without being too um, coppery, without being too orange looking. I'm just going to go ahead and pat that all over the inner half of my lid. And I gotta say, the pigment on these shadows are absolutely amazing. It doesn't matter if it's a matte shadow or a um, glittery uh, metallic shadow. Now going back into this color, I don't think I said what this color was earlier, but it is called Central Park. I'm using my Sigma E25 brush and I'm going to just soften the edges right here where the two shadows meet just so that there isn't a harsh line. It's also going to help deepen up that outer corner a little bit more. So let me go ahead and just add some eyeliner and some lashes and I will be right back to finish the under eyes. Okay, so I went ahead and put my lashes on and instead of going with something really dramatic, I went with more of a softer lash just because I didn't want all the attention to be on the lashes but rather more on the eyeshadow. And same with the eyeliner as well. I also just used the black shadow in the Jaclyn Hill palette called Abyss. And I just lined my lash line, my upper lash line with it so that it would just deepen the lash line rather than creating a really harsh black line with a liquid liner. I wanted it to be soft. I wanted the focus to be more on the shadow rather than anything else on my eyes. So that's why I used a black shadow instead of a black liquid liner to do like a wing like I usually do. I just wanted to keep it soft today. So for the bottom lash line, what I'm going to do today is pretty much do what I did on top and I'm slowly going to deepen it up just like I did on the top. Okay, going in with the color Butter once again, I'm going to start warming up my my lower lash line. Now taking the color Mocha right here, just like we did earlier, I am going to deepen up this outer corner right here. And now to deepen up the outer corners even more, I'm going to take this color right here, which is called Central Park, and I'm going to add that really, really close to my waterline as I can. Now to line my eyes, I'm going to be using this Butter London Wink Eye, pe eye Pencil in the color Brown Sugar. Um, instead of using a black, this is going to be a really, really dark brown just to deepen up those outer corners a little bit more. Okay guys, so here is the finished look. I went ahead and just added some mascara and that was it. 
Um, when I first started doing this eye look, I wasn't really sure as to what I was going to look like in the end or how my eyes were going to look in the end. But all I knew is that I wanted something bronzy and deep and brown, but I didn't want it to be too much of an orangey gold. I wanted it to be more of a deeper nighttime type of look. And a lot of the people that have been creating the looks online, like on Facebook or um, Instagram with this palette, have been creating a lot of cranberry warm orangey colors and I really love those colors a lot but I just wanted to step aside and do something a little bit different and so this is what I came up with and it can be good for a nighttime look a daytime look if you're extra um, now to talk about the palette I really like the palette so I don't know if you usually notice but I like to do my foundation after I do my eyes because of fallout from eyeshadows and although this shadow or this palette had um, some like it would kick up some powder or eyeshadow here like in the matte colors it did not fall down on my cheeks especially with the dark colors I was a little bit worried that it would but I really wanted to put it to the test and see if the shadows would fall down and have some fallout on my cheeks which they did not, which was absolutely awesome. Um, the metallic colors right here were, or this metallic color that I use is absolutely amazing. The pigmentation on it did not need any wetting of my brush. And you know, sometimes I like to spray um, Fix Plus spray on my brush just so that my eyeshadow can be more um, like opaque and very metallic looking. But I feel like I didn't even need to do that today. Um, let me go ahead and just swatch a couple more of the shadows. I'll do this one. I'll do this really pretty pinky looking gold up here. I will do this beautiful cranberry shade. And then I will do this. I'll do a matte shade since I didn't swatch on that one. I'll do this really nice cranberry looking matte. And as you can see, they are super pigmented. I'll show you what they look like. So here is the cranberry matte. Very pigmented. Has a little bit of um, kick up from the powder, but that is okay. Here is that very, I don't even remember which one this was. I think it was a pinky one on top, which is faint. And then this one is the very gold um, champagne peachy color which is obsessed and then this last one is called sorry i'm like looking at this little card here but this one is called cran apple let me see really really pretty so these are all very very pigmented shades um even the matte is extremely pigmented it did have a little bit of um kick up when i put my finger on the shadow but it didn't have like fallout like on my face when I use the darker colors the darker matte colors I use today there was no fallout which is really really nice um, the palette itself is really beautiful it's white it's very chic white and silver um, it says Morphe times Jaclyn Hill on the back I will say one thing so I will say one thing about the packaging of this palette is that the cardboard corners here, they tend to get damaged really easily. Before I even got my package to open it, um, I already noticed that the corners like here are already pressed in a little bit. I don't know if you can see it on camera and also here a little bit, but it's not a big deal. The eyeshadows were not damaged at all. Um, a lot of people have been saying that they didn't like the cardboard feeling because they think that it would get dirty easily, but I don't know. Let's put that to the test. How about that? Let's take this black color and then I will I will swatch it on my palette. Let's see how easy it is to clean it off. So let me just get a wet wipe and just wipe it. Uh, so it doesn't really come off at all. I mean, if you keep, you know, cleaning it and whatnot, then it will. 
but yeah i usually like to keep my palettes very clean and i like to wipe them ouch, i like to wipe them down and i sometimes i like to have them as display so i keep them very clean um this palette not being able to stay very clean especially if i have eyeshadows on my hands and touch the palette it'll be hard to clean it off so i feel like this palette cannot be put on display really well, the shadow is kind of coming off now that I'm like using my finger. But you can still totally see where it was, but that's okay. Not a big deal. Um, I do wish the palette had a mirror is another thing for $38. I think that she could have put a mirror here and then maybe etched um, the saying onto the mirror. Right? Like on the bottom corner or something. Something cute like that I think would really benefit her more especially with the palette costing more. I think that they really could have just put a mirror in it because it can be difficult to go back and forth from palette to mirror, palette to mirror. If you're really on the go like me sometimes, I'll take my palettes traveling and I really wish that I had a mirror in my palette. So sometimes I will just take a big mirror, but sometimes also I'm afraid of the um, mirror breaking in my luggage. So that kind of sucks. Okay, so the last thing that I'm a little bit nitpicky about the palette is that it does not have the shade names anywhere on or in the palette. It comes separately on a little card when you get your package inside of the box, not even inside of not even inside of this box. It came inside of the packaging box, which I think a lot of people may have missed because you know when you get a new palette you just get so excited you rip open the box you don't pay attention to what's inside especially if you order just one thing which is this i didn't even know that this card came in the box until later that evening when i went back into my car to pull my trash out and i saw the card in there so i was like oh man well luckily i saw the card because then i wouldn't know the shade names at all and i'm not about to look it up online but it would be really nice if the shades were in here. I might just take this card and like tape it right here or something. It's kind of a pain, but it would be nice if the shade names were in there so I could reference it to you guys as I'm doing my eyes rather than having to constantly look back and forth. Like I said, it's not a big deal. Just a little bit nitpicky about it, but the eyeshadows are amazing. Um, both matte and the shimmer shades are absolutely amazing. Little to no fallout. I did not experience any fallout, but like I said with the matte shades, it kind of kicked up some powder, which, you know, is not a big deal at all, honestly. As long as the shades work nice and they look nice, they blend nice and all that, which I really think that they did. Okay guys, so that is the end of the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this little tutorial slash review on the Jaclyn Hill Times Morphe Brushes collaboration palette. Um, I really do suggest that you guys go out and buy this palette when you can, if you guys can catch it on resale again. I know that it's constantly sold out, but I think it's a really good palette and I think that you guys should get it too. If you guys like this video, then please give me a thumbs up and be sure to hit subscribe down below if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time. Bye!